Hello and welcome to my world. I am, of course, Fred Kasdan. As you know, seven nights a week, I stream live over on Twitch, playing a variety of video games. Now, one of the games that I featured heavily so far here in 2020, as you can tell by the footage that you're seeing up there in the title of this video, is, of course, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the sequel to the original Knights of the Old Republic game that came out about a year after the original release. And needless to say, this game is notorious for quite a few things, um, with it being a game that was rushed through development to make sure it hit the shelves as quickly as possible to cash in on, on the success of the first game, as well as having a lot of content that was cut and playing on the PC side, having the Steam version of the game and I'm happy to say, and also with a strong dismay <laughs> that I did on my first playthrough of this particular game, I did use the restoration uh, mod to make sure I got the full experience of Knights of the Old Republic 2. And needless to say, I actually regret using that particular mod for a few reasons. So the biggest reason is um, I feel from the notes that I've read re regarding what the, what the mod and that community and, and their Herculean effort and restoring as much content to this game that was cut for its initial release, um, a lot of it feels like, a lot of that restored content feels way too much like padding. It, it, it just, it, it made this game feel like a chore to get through. And you're talking to someone <laughs> who happily goes through every damn side quest of Mass Effect Andromeda to make sure it's like it's 100% sustainability throughout the entire Andro throughout the entire cluster in that game. I happily go through above and beyond to do everything in that game. In Kotar 2. There is so much content in it. It, uh, it it was more than apparent to me that, yeah, I skipped over things and I have no idea if it was stuff that was actually part of the original, of the actual vanilla release of the game or something that was restored. I mean, the achievement guide, uh, the achievement list on Steam definitely gave me a good indication of some stuff that I missed, but folks that were, um, uh, watching and commenting during uh, during the the live streams um they point out that or asking did i do this did i do that and the office is like i just i just couldn't remember and i and i know there were certain things i messed up on nar Shaddaa because it was just really unclear where certain things overlap what was what was i supposed to do in what order and to make sure i completed as much as possible and normally it says uh, a game with a lot of content is a good thing but when you're playing a game where that content is restored and you're in and the thought i get is yeah this was cut out of the game for a reason and there is probably no no bigger example of that, of that feeling that I got than with the H HK-47's uh, One Droid uh, campaign through the, uh, the, through the HK-50 uh, Droid fa uh, Factory. And I say yes, and, and when you're fighting off, uh, if you're lucky, only three enemies at once, it's and it that just became a nightmare just to get through it. It took most of, I think, the ninth night of the broadcast just to get through that one area because it was just a slog uh, to, to, to get through. I mean, I have a feeling that that was supposed to play differently if it was left in the original game. There was like... It makes no damn sense at all for HK50 to be the only droid, a character 
be in that mission. Again, uh, again, assuming I did everything were uh, that I clearly just stated that more likely I missed things. I probably would have set that up more logically that there were supposed to be other characters involved with that. But it it was just a chore. It was just HK47 against all these droids. You got one room, one area where you, if you go into one room, you aggro three droids after a cutscene where they're torturing another one for training purposes. And then it somehow brought, brings in six more droids from, from adjoining rooms, from two adjoining rooms. So you got nine on ones. Like, really? It's like, well, it, it, it made no sense. It's like, okay, so clearly that content was, was cut for a really damn good reason. Um, now, in comparison to the first Kotar game, from what I remember from a year ago, over a year ago at this point, um, Kotar 2 does use a lot of the same models, maps, uh, and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Content, for lack of a better term, in terms of its graphic and visuals and sounds. So, which is fair, a game coming out less than a year later, you're not going to get much of an improvement in terms of how a game looks. But at the same time, the voice acting was definitely, I would dare say, better in many respects. Uh, with the restoration content mod, I'm not sure how much of the dialogue trees that I went through thoroughly was stuff that was added back in <laughs> for or what was cut out there's no way for me to easily tell unless i do another playthrough of this game which i do not intend to do anytime soon but the uh the voice work for the aliens the twi'leks and the uh the hut the one hut and some of the other aliens i think sounded better in in kotar 2 versus the first game that it, it didn't feel like the meant much of the uh audio clips that we're using to convey this the alien these various aliens dialogues were being cycled through as continuously as they were in the first kotar game the I still have nightmares of how, of the male Twi'lek dialogue from the first Kotar game that had this weird pattern. It's like it it that unique. It was that pattern that just drove was drove me bat batty. So in terms of how the aliens sound and making sure that whatever sound loop that was that they were using for the dialogue it uh it it was that was happily adjusted again i'm and again i'm not sure if that was part of the restoration mod con uh, continuity uh communities efforts on trying to make kotar 2 the most complete game possible or the best game possible but it again no way for me to tell but it was definitely appreciated after what i went through a year prior in terms of story i think i actually like kotar 2 more than the first one um reason being is that with Co kotar 2 is you have more of a, sh a, a uh, a real shade of gray here because of the story of the main protagonist is an exile, someone who lost their connection to the Force, who followed Revan into the Mandalorian Wars, and they were already a Jedi, and you're basically re regaining that connection to the Force, and so that journey of redemption, particularly since I went light side, was really there. It was a Jedi who lost everything, what was slowly regaining everything and the tie-in to uh, Darth Treya uh, was who was basically a fallen Sith from my understanding of the 
various lore within the game well was was really cool in terms of the companion characters uh mira was real interesting uh, she at least had that uh, whole uh well for lack of a better term street rat vibe about her someone a bounty hunter from nar Shaddai. she definitely had more of a complex personality and backstory than aton and even though Aton was it was he was a Sith, he tortured Jedi's and, and so forth, so he kind of uh he was on that he was on that side of the line at one point in his backstory. Aton really comes across as a character that I'm more than likely screwed up with some with if he was supposed to straight up die as getting into a particular Barth fight fight with uh was that Darth uh, Sion towards the end of the game. Uh if it's possible for Aton to live, I he sure as heck did not live when I played the game. <laughs> it's like Aton was well, he was stomped on without question. Uh Candorus being brought back uh from the first game as leader of the Mandalorians was a nice touch at T3, HK47 definitely presented those nice familiarity of companions, of, of the droids and everything, filling the role of R2-D2 and uh, C-3PO to various respects. I think T3 sounded more like R2-D2 in this game than he did in the first one, but I could, I could be wrong about that. Um, but so, um, any which way. Overall, those are my impressions and thoughts on Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. If you have your own thoughts and opinions on the game, leave them in the comments section below. And of course, the complete playlist of all 10 streams uh, that I dedicated it to KOTAR 2 can be found right here on the YouTube channel. I made sure to port those over. With that said, hope everybody, I hope you have yourselves a good day day night whatever it is it whatever the case may be of when you're watching this tighten your friendship bracelets watch your hang down and we'll see you next week for another commentary video till then have a good one